believers also, and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. See, now what happened here, they was resurrected with their regular grave clothes on. And they asked, how long, Lord, before your judge? They didn't communicate no. And right, and he says, look, to your brother and be killed like you were. That was what was called a Roman Inquisition, where they slaughtered anybody that even mentioned the word Christ. Right. Nero right. killed his mother because she said the word Christ. <coughs> so this is how evil this generation was. There was a mass slaughter. And it said when they go through the second set of martyrs, then he said, but look, I know y'all concerned about where you end up. White robes. Look, white robes is only given to the righteous saints. When you see Christ in his army, when they got on. Look, how you know when a demon is messing with you, if you talk to Big Mama, what clothes she got on? She got on the same clothes she had in the casket. Anybody ever seen them in different clothes than they were in in the casket? Or they come in with a revelation or a prophecy? See, you got to be aware and make sure this ain't safe. You got to ask him in your dream why you lose the dream. Or you come in with the word of the Most High. A demon cannot... Uh, uh, lie to you when you ask them that question. They are under orders only to turn from the truth. And he'll say, no. But look, don't you want to know what Big Mama doing? Don't you? You want to know she all right, don't you? And lure you into the entertainment. There you go. So y'all, every word we read in the scripture, when we read in the Mount of Transfiguration, how was Moses and Elijah dressed? In white robe, gleaming, shining, Whenever the angels come, they say, I saw him, it was so bright. Moses came up the mount like that because he had been in the presence of Christ. Bright, you know, so we understand that they were given, at that point, their salvation. And put back, and what were they done? Told them to do what? Go back to sleep. A little season. It ain't judgment time yet. But y'all good. So when judgment time comes, y'all walk up in y'all robes. Well done, sir. You got to spot me more for that. They already do. But if you ain't been granted the right robe or your name is in his forehead when people say they say, we ask a question, what is your new name? Because when Abraham was found faithful, his name changed right. from Abram to Abraham, Abraham, from Sarah to Sarah, from Jacob, Jacob to Israel. Israel. So we know the name change comes when the Lord is dealing with you directly. <coughs> Let's hit y'all. We got two more. Y'all gonna close out for time's sake. Huh? Holler it out. You can even holler it out. Write down uh, Revelation three. I wanna go. I wanna go back while he hollers it out. I'm going right back to the apocryphal for second Maccabees. Write down uh, Revelation three and twelve about uh, the new name. You know, people saying that they saved. Ain't got no new name. Y'all understand this, what Satan is doing, y'all, these things that the Most High is telling us to stay away from. He's telling us to stay away from them because we'll get out of control and we'll start to worship the sun and the moon. We're going to end up with, we're going to hit the second back then we're going to hit Deuteronomy 4. And we're going to close out, y'all. And we got many more that we do. And also, we didn't hit Isaiah 29 yet. Because a lot of times, uh, it'll be said, some speak from the ground. You know, also the Jasher, I had that pulled up with Joseph. This is a question we ask, or, or the non messianics, I'm going to say this, we're going to move on. When they are talking about Christ, what Christ said in Matthew 1, I'm spoken of about what the prophet Jeremiah said. Immediately, they run to the book of Jeremiah and say, right here, what is that chapter? I don't see nothing in there about this fit in Christ. Well, you didn't keep reading. Because if you keep reading, you would have saw in Rama that's crying, Rachel weak. Now, Rachel died before he ever got into Egypt for the captivity. Mm -hmm. This is the Babylonian captivity where we served 70 years. Almost how many years later? Three, four hundred years later? Maybe six hundred years later? Why is the prophet in Jeremiah speaking about a woman that was dead before we went into Egypt? And her week? And her week. What was it about? Back then, it was about her son. Slaughter. The slaughtering of future generation of Israelite children. Christ said this same thing. Rachel's weeping now because they're killing all the newborn under two years and old. Looking for me when he was a baby. So that's the prophecy of Jeremiah. It's fitting both of them.
But they are looking for something else in Jeremiah that don't fit Christ. Christ is exactly weeping and wrong. How does a dead woman weep? Who hears it? Mm. That's the question. And these are in the Old Testament way before that. So we ask those who don't believe in Christ what's happening here in the Old Testament. They can't answer. Y'all, but we got to be able to answer every one of these so that nobody else saying that sounds like necromancy to me. Well, it ain't Satan is a copycat. These things took place always in the heaven. Resurrection was always there, not reincarnation. I'm not David. That ain't real bold over there. He may have the name of Zephaniah or Zephaniah, that's Zephaniah back there. But that ain't Zephaniah that lived. 300 years ago. 2nd Maccabees, Maccabees y'all. We're going to that. But first I want to, before we go down, I want to hit Isaiah 29, 1 through 4. Because this is something very uh, important again. The dead does not know a thing. When you die for the Christian you go to sleep like this. You don't know nothing until somebody say, hey, wake up. The Lord wants you to wake up. What? You wake up. You wake up. Not nobody else as you. You wake up. Lord, I got some business for you. You're not put back to death. It never says because it says in the scriptures, Hebrews 9, 27. It's appointed for every man to die once. So when he laid them back to sleep, he didn't put them back to death. They just went back and continued on with their first sleep. There was no second death. The second death has no power if you've been granted the king. You cannot die again. All right, Isaiah 29, chapter. Verse 1, brother. Yes, sir. 1 through 4. Isaiah 29, verse 1. Woe to Ariel. Woe to who? Ariel. Boy, you better look out. Another name for Jerusalem, y'all. Right. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt. Uh, mm. Add ye year to year, let them kill sacrifice. Yet I will distress Ariel, and there shall be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. And I will camp against thee round about, and will lay siege against thee with a mount. And I will raise forts against thee, and thou shalt be brought down, and shall speak out of the ground. What are you going to do? And thou shalt be brought down, and shall speak out of the ground. Right. And thy speech shall be low out of the dust. Right. And thy voice shall be as a one that has a familiar spirit. Done. Out of the ground. See, one that has a familiar spirit, as one that has a familiar spirit, but you're not a familiar spirit. It separates demon and, and righteousness. Two different things, y'all. And have to be, it's called familiar spirit. This is called resurrection of the just. Two different things. So this is what was put away from us, people going conjuring us demons. It's a total difference than asking the Lord, but these people ain't got a clue why they sleep. Go ahead. What you saying? As a one that has a familiar spirit, uh -huh. out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. Right? You go. You can hold right there. So that's another witness in, in, in Isaiah that uh, speaking of the voice, and also y'all, a lot of times when somebody's legacy is carrying on. It's carried on like they're speaking from the, from the dust. But this compared it solely to a familiar spirit. It wanted you to see the difference between the two as one that would speak of a familiar spirit. It didn't say it was. See, y'all, it's little small key words like shall, will, might, you know, that don't mean an absolute. Like it said, if you endure to the end, you might be saved. You shall be saved. You will be saved. Based on what? If you endure unto the end. You can't be saved beforehand. This is why the soul underneath the altar was crying. They're like, how long long before the judge? White robes. White robes mean you sealed. That's what everybody got in the kingdom. White robes. Pure and white. 
Let's hit this last one, y'all. We're going to close out. But this is that Jasher 42. Y'all make sure y'all read that in the book of Jasher 42. Verse 30 on down. And you see like verse 35, he asked his mama to arise from that sleep. This matches up with Rachel Weep. Jeremiah 31. Rachel Weep and Jeremiah 31. And, and that's where Christ speaks of it about it in Matthew 1 where he said Jeremiah the prophet. Uh, Rachel weeping for her children. Well, Rachel only had two children, Benjamin and Joseph. So who else is she weeping for? Why is this prophecy 300 years now? No, that was 400 years in Egypt, and then maybe this is about 1,000 years later that the same prophecy is being brought up. Huh? Yeah. Second, second, second chapter where Christ is, is saying Jeremiah's prophet spoke of me. Y'all, we're about to get out of here. We got one more. I want to hit uh, Deuteronomy 4. Yes. And some Jasher 42, starting on verse 30. Y'all, this is Joseph before he went into Egypt. They are about to sell him into slavery. He passed his mama's grave. Y'all see, there's a lot of times we'll say, well, should people go out and talk to their grave? No, it would be, it would be dealing with a familiar spirit. You don't have the power to resurrect. If you are that, it, but we have tombstone markers all the time. We're just going to hit this and that second Maccabees, y'all, and we out of here. For the new people, uh, the book of Jasher is another book that's a part of the Bible. If you write down uh, uh, Joshua chapter 10, verse 13, and write down 2 Samuel 1 and verse 18. It speaks of the book of Jasher. It tells you to study out of it. That's right. In the Bible. <laughs> Joshua chapter 10 and verse 13. And the other one is 2 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 18. Right. Uh, Joshua 10 and 13. Going to second Matthew, y'all, 12, and we're going to close out. Second Samuel 1 and 18. We got to close the prayer. What is Y'all, and understand these things, y'all. This is what you have to wrap your mind around. Y'all been seeing so much wickedness, and we've been told to stay away from the powers of God that they're going to be used from a wicked perspective. So the Most High say, look, just don't do it. Just don't deal with it. Because you're going to fall the ways of Satan. You ain't going to do what the Lord has asked you to do that. So just don't mess with that. I will send you the comfort. Deal with that. Deal with that. Don't get into rubbing no palms and shaking no bones. You know, because it's going to cause problems for you. Just deal with this. Satan has got the mastery of that. He's been teaching it for a long time. And he's going to teach it for your own destruction. He'll teach you the Ouija boy. You think the Ouija boy don't work? We got witnesses that say hands slid across that. Different things that happen. These are opening up that gateway portal to hell. Right. If you think it's fairy tales, you better think again. Go ahead, what you got, bro? And yeah, this also was during the time before the most high that he bring to deal with me and everybody because we kill the prophets and stuff we were to be I can't hear you. What you saying? Speak loud, yeah, bro. This was going on before the most I say he was too dealing with me and with dealing with signs and prophecy because we allowed we didn't hear a prophecy and allowed him to keep. Absolutely. Even in, in that Luke 16, in, in the uh about the rich man and the poor man, he said if you can dip your finger in the, this is a future prophecy of the kingdom of heaven and the lake of fire. He said, for I am tormented in this flame. He wasn't being consumed, but he was just being tormented. He said, you can just dip your finger in He said, look, and tell them to go back and tell my brother. He's like, look, if one rose from the dead and went back, they ain't gonna believe it. This already didn't happen before. They still don't believe it. They just hard head, hard head. Like Bo King Woodbine on Jason Leary, hard head. <laughs> Let's read where we at. Good right on. No, no, we don't have that. Uh, you get that right, Second Maccabees first. We're gonna close out with New Rock. Second Maccabees 12, 39, y'all. We're only gonna hit a little bit of this because a lot of times they'll say, well, this looks like purgatory, like they're paying off. 
But it's a key word in there that says may or will, like David when he was praying for that son he had by Bathsheba, Bathsheba illegally. He said, who knows if the Lord will spare this child? If the Lord killed him on the seventh day, on the eighth day he would have had to been circumcised. And being a king that brought in a bastard child or committed adultery knowing it wasn't happening. Second Maccabees chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 35. What does it say? And upon the day followed, as the youth had been, Judas and his company came to take up the bodies of them that were slain and to bury them with their king kinsmen in their father's grave. Mm. Now under the coats of every one that was slain, they found things consecrated to the idols of the Jamunites. See, so Jamunites. when they went to get the dead bodies, here they, they rolled them over, they clutched on to their idols. Save me the same way you do if you clutching on to a cross. cross. Walking through the steakhouse alley at night. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't going to help you. That's an idol. Somebody made it at a pawn shop or at a jewelry shop. It has no power. None. Go ahead. Which is forbidden the Jews by the law. What does it say again? Which is forbidden the Jews by the law. So when you see Egyptology, they put all that food and idols in the casket with them. They think they're taking it to the after world. No. No. They ain't taking it nowhere. No. The same way as us. You can put all that stuff in the casket. You won't get in here. Go ahead, brother. Then every man saw that this was the cause whereof, wherefore they were slain. Why were they slain? Yes. What's the cause? I am worshiping. Go ahead. All men therefore praising the Lord, the righteous, the righteous judge, who had opened the things that were hid, betook themselves unto prayer and besought him that the sin committed might wholly be put out of, the, of remembrance. Uh -huh. Besides, that no Ju Judas exhorted the people to keep themselves from sin, for so much as they saw before their eyes the things that came to pass for the sin of those who were slain. And when he had made, get, made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of 2,000 Drachms of silver. Uh -huh. He sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, doing therein very well and honestly, in that he was mindful of the resurrection. Now hold it right here. See, so he sent money back to Jerusalem, mindful of the resurrection. Of the resurrection that was coming. He like, look, Lord, these men died because they died in idol worship. But this wealth, we coming back, we want to be mindful of the resurrection that's coming. And we offering a sin offering now for Jerusalem doing what they was doing. <laughs> a lot of people read this and say, well, right here, this sounds like purgatory that the Catholics teach. This sounds like you trying to pay off sins for dead people. But if we read, they use the word man, and they said possibly the sin that Israel committed. We are praying for that, not for those individuals that's dead trying to buy their way back into the kingdom. We see why they were slain. When they rolled them over, I worship. They clutched on to Mary's statues or whatever the idol was back in that day. Diana's statue. Go ahead, read on some more. 44. Uh -huh. For if he had not hoped that they that were slain should have risen again, it had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. Right. And also, in that he perceived that there was a great favor laid up for those that died God. That died how? God. See, that's the difference in what we're talking about. If you die God. Look, every friend we go to, look yeah. Willie in there. Yeah. All of a sudden you read an obituary and look Willie first came to know Christ at an early age. And <laughs> he went to Vashon and he <coughs> did this and you have to go and you like, hey, Oh, he robbed my house the next door to Abel's. Who was this the guy well, that you were pushing in the head? City, boy. And I know he's up there with the Lord looking down. Oh, you think it's that easy? 
Right. Go ahead, bro. Read some more. We're going to read this last one from Romney 4. It was an holy and good thought. Uh -huh. Whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead, that they might be delivered from sin. So he right. made a reconciliation. He asked the Lord, well, this, just the, those that died righteously. Lord, and see, that's the key word where we got to get in, y'all. It's always some word that tips off what it's talking about. Right. Those that die, right. He ain't saying nothing else, but the, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. It said that in the New Testament. We have to understand, any man that turned back from the law of the Lord that was perfect, all of the treasures that they were storing in heaven goes to the rest of the saints. It's divvied up. They out. They free. It's not talking about wickedness. It's talking about practicing that you do every day. You know wicked, but you practice wickedness. And if you're an Israelite that know who you are, and you turn, or anybody that's believed in Christ, you turn to another God. All of that heavenly money you have stored up goes to the righteous soul that enter into the kingdom. Matthew 25. That's what it means when it says the, the, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the right. It don't mean because uh, Hitler had a few gold coins, we're going to split that up. No, we're talking about people that love the Lord, understood him, and then turned. Just like it talked about in Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18 Jesus. breaks it down, all souls of mine. If a righteous man been righteous his whole life, but turned at the last minute, none of his righteousness should be counted. None of it. If a wicked man to his last day, and then he turned, his wickedness ain't going to be counted. Right. But you can't play Russian roulette with the Lord. Right. 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 Do it right before y'all will close out. Yeah. Also write down 1 Peter 4 and 18. It says, if the righteous that scarcely be saved, where should the ungodly and the sinner appear? Read that again. What does that say? It says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved. Y'all know what that means? If they scarcely be saved, they just get through the door. Who would even get through by in your teeth. By this the right. your teeth. Right. Where does the sinner and the ungodly stand? Right. And we know righteousness is law keeping. That's right. So Let's get it. What's that? So it says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, uh -huh. where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Right. Man. And judge, like everybody else, waiting to hear the word. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. For God and keep his commandments. For the whole duty of man, when he's going to bring everything into judgment, every word, whether good or evil, everything coming out on that day. Everything. Go ahead, where we at? Let's read this last one. Where we at? Deuteronomy 4. Start about. Yeah. 15? Yeah, we go down to 20. 20 23, y'all. We'll close out. Y'all read all that on your own time, y'all. We just kind of ran out of time a little bit today, y'all. But y'all read all of that, y'all. And y'all get into the Urim and Thummim and understand and casting the blocks. You will see these things already been done righteously. It's when Satan get a hold of them, he turned them into wickedness. It don't mean they was wicked from the beginning because every idea, like we talk about the Christmas tree. The tree was in the garden first, so tree worship has always been in the garden, but not to right. worship literal objects or human beings like ourselves that are sinners. That's what Satan gets you to do. So his tree is a physical tree that you will worship or another man that's a sinner like yourself. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. What does it say? At least thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven. I tell you what, back it up to uh, 16, 15. 15 yeah. Go ahead, y'all. Deuteronomy right chapter 4, verse 15. Yeah. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. Right. For ye saw no matter of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Right. Ye ye corrupt yourselves. And make you a graven image. Mm -hmm. So he said, when you saw the Lord come down on my side, I did none of y'all see him. Just talk about making a picture of him. Huh? Every picture looked like somebody you know. Jerry Curls went out then. But if you got a black one, that's what he got. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, brother. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female.
female. Y'all heard this, the similitude of any figure, male or female. Go ahead. Hold the it down over there, y'all. Go ahead. The likeness of any beast. The likeness of any beast. All oh, that's in Egyptology. Right. Go ahead. That is on the earth. The likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air. Right. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. Right. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And least thou lift up thine eyes in the heaven. Uh -huh. And when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should it be driven to worship them. See, and that's where we get moon worship or the uh, Muslim doctrine, the Muslim doctrine, they are moon worship. Right. Modern day is what we call the doctrine of Christianity out of Rome after the Council of the Sea in 372 AD. It's sun worship. What is it? 325, 325. AD. They are sun worshippers. Brought up from Nimrod through Egypt and now is hidden these doctrines today. Go ahead. Which? Oh yeah, verse 19. Uh, verse 19. At least thou lift up thine eyes in the heaven, uh -huh. and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God had divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. See, he gave the sun for every nation to use it for the feast days, and for crops, and whatever it was for. Not to worship the sun. Go ahead. But the Lord had taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, mm. even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people mm. of inheritance, mm. as ye are this day. We can hold right there. Y'all read the rest of that on your own time. Just got to make this quick enough for y'all. We're going to talk about the Passover again and the outstanding work that was done. I thank all of y'all. Y'all, but that's what comes with discipline and order, decently in order, y'all. We got to stick with it, y'all, so that this can go off. We looking for in the high 200s. We was closing in on 400 people. Yeah, well, we'll it was fantastic, y'all. Just want to send shouts out to everybody that participated, y'all, and helped pull that off. And we got uh, the next one is the Feast of uh, Pentecost. We'll give the location for that. That will be a park event where we'll put down the scriptures. And then we'll feast again. That's right. And right after that, you know, we have the trumpets, Day of Atonement. But our next out, out feast is, is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles of Sukkot, where a lot of us who's already signed up on the list, if you, if you didn't sign up, y'all missed out, y'all, because we're going to do Sukkot out in a, a Merrimack State Park or wherever they are going to set them tents up, like it talks about in the scripture. We got to live and understand what it is to, to be outside, like how Christ was born. He was born in a Sukkot pool. Right. Contrary to, uh, to uh, popular belief, he was born in late September or October, right. around the Feast of Tabernacles. So y'all, we, we want to be clear on that. That'll be another subject when we get to that, you know, on the day that he was born, because he was born six months six before months. Uh, Zachariah.
So y'all, on the last day of the feast, y'all, the feast closed, yeah, we want to mention Brother Isaiah too. On the feast closed, sundown, well, at sun, sunset on uh, Monday night, y'all, the Feast of Unleavened Bread ends, you can get back into it, but I'm telling you, y'all, just think about that one week of eating no bread with yeast in it.